ladies and gentlemen, the 2000. At the Detroit Auto Show earlier this year, U.S. automaker General Motors introduced the Chevrolet Volt concept car. It's long-awaited extended-range electric vehicle. GM would like to sell the car to consumers soon, but there is one hitch: the technology that makes it work doesn't exist yet. GM has stepped way out with their decision to make the Volt because they don't have a battery yet. Don Hillebrand is the director of the Center for Transportation Research at the U.S. Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory. At Argonne, scientists and engineers are studying the lithium-ion battery. The technology would ultimately power the Volt for up to 40 miles without gasoline. A gasoline-powered backup would then take over and recharge the battery. Right now, the battery for the Volt is unstable. It is also expensive, which means that running the car would be more costly than using gasoline. I think the government has something of an obligation, since companies like GM and Ford and Toyota have stepped out in front and been willing to uh, to try to develop this technology. They're all waiting for a battery uh, that will meet their needs at the cost that they can actually afford, that consumers can pay for. So a lot of the research we're doing is focused on trying to provide that battery. Although GM calls the Volt's technology extended range electricity, Hillebrand says it is similar to plug-in hybrids or PHEVs. PHEV technology is currently being developed for vehicles like the Saturn View Sport Utility Vehicle. PHEVs allow drivers to use both a limited range battery charged from an electrical outlet and gasoline. Some companies working on plug-in technology are bringing their vehicles to research engineer Michael Duoba. In fact, we're probably one of the only labs that have done uh, as nearly as, as comprehensive a testing as anybody in plug-ins. So we've had an, at least eight vehicles through here that we've tested different designs, different manufacturers. Henning Losa Bush, another Argonne researcher, says no technology has emerged as the clear alternative to gasoline. But some solutions, such as commercial hybrid technology, are already available to consumers. It enables drivers to go short distances on an electric battery before the gasoline engine kicks in extending the mileage you get from a tank of gas. So that, that will be the short term, will really be uh, alternative fuels and uh, hybrids. And then in the longer term, you're looking at a uh, plethora of newer technologies from plug-in hybrids to um, possibly uh, extreme alternative fuels like hydrogen. This Chevrolet Equinox uses hydrogen. Hydrogen gas powers a fuel cell that moves the car. The exhaust is water. There is no pollution. This Equinox in the testing facility is part of Challenge X, a competition sponsored by GM and the Department of Energy. University students are competing against each other to find ways to make the hydrogen vehicle more efficient. Um, reset all the overrides just in case it, if it comes back. Hydrogen is clean, but it has limitations. There is no infrastructure for distributing hydrogen across the United States, so the hydrogen has to be available locally. And that will really depend on where you're located, what the resources are that you have around you in your states. Nevertheless, Japanese car maker Honda has announced that its hydrogen-powered car, the FCX Clarity, will be available for leasing next year. At first, only 200 will be available, and only in the western state of California. GM has not yet announced when consumers can own its hydrogen Equinox. It's testing about 100 across North America. At the same time, GM hopes the Volt will be the answer to current fuel woes. Don Hillebrand agrees. The Volt's a huge part of the solution, actually, if it actually could work. GM hopes to make the Volt widely available by 2010, around the same time that Toyota intends to introduce a plug-in hybrid to customers in the United States. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago.